There is no life without a spiritual life. There is no life without understanding what Pierre de Chardin, the philosopher and mystic said, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So your real job as you go out to try to find one and have all of this anxiety and fear and your real job is to know the truth and to create a spiritual practice that allows you to stay in it. To be clear, I'm not talking about your religion. I'm talking about whatever it is that nurtures the essence of you in such a way that you can do what you came here to do. And one of the reasons why I was able to be so successful all those years on The Oprah Show is because I understood there was really no difference between me and the audience. I was a surrogate for the audience because I know that the audience and you and you and you want the same thing I do. We all want to be able to live out the truest expression, the fullest, purest expression of ourselves as human beings. Purest expression of ourselves as human beings. That's what you want. And in order to do that, you've got to practice, you've got to develop that spiritual muscle that allows you to check in with yourself and not have to ask everybody else about a decision, but to have the clarity of your own knowing, the comfort of your own knowing. To do that, you've got to live in the space of gratitude. That is my number one spiritual practice. I practice being grateful. And a lot of people say, oh, Oprah, that's easy for you because you got everything. I got everything because I practiced being grateful. I ran across this beautiful quote the other day, I can't even remember where it was from, that said, do not waste your time desiring what other people have. Remember, the things that you now have are things you once only hoped for. So I live in that space every day of practicing gratitude because I know that being grateful wherever you are, whatever place or space in your life, being grateful changes your personal vibration. I was just having a conversation with Sheryl Sandberg the other day about her book, Option B, and we all know she lost her beloved husband, David. And I said, how did you get through it? And she said, by practicing gratitude. I didn't believe it at first, but I started to write down three things every day that I was grateful for. I said, oh, I've been doing that for years. Because when you wake up in the morning, looking at the world, for what you're gonna write down or what you're gonna state to yourself by the end of the day that you're grateful for, you have a different outlook on life. I'm just waiting on somebody to hold the door, see if that makes the list. Some days you only have, I'm still breathing, because life gets in the way sometimes. But practicing gratitude as a spiritual practice to evolve you, to bring you closer to the truth of knowing who you really are, is one of the most valuable things I have ever, ever experienced. And I do, I have journals and journals and journals and journals filled with five things a day. If you don't believe me, just for a moment, do this, close your eyes, everybody in here. We're gonna do this for five seconds. You're gonna inhale and on the exhale, just say, thank you. Inhale, exhale. Whatever you're most grateful for in your heart in this moment, just rise to the surface. Deep breath. Thank you. Open your eyes. Don't you feel better? You feel better. Researchers have shown that if you can just for 17 seconds a day, 17 seconds a day, bring yourself into the space of presence and gratitude, you literally change your vibration. If you can't give yourself 17 seconds, then you don't deserve a good life. You can't give yourself 17 seconds to breathe and say thank you, then just let whatever happens, happens to you. 
In 1964, I was a little girl sitting on the linoleum floor of my mother's house in Milwaukee, watching Anne Bancroft present the Oscar for Best Actor at the 36th Academy Awards. She opened the envelope and said five words that literally made history. The winner is Sidney Poitier. Up to the stage came the most elegant man I had ever seen. I remember his tie was white and of course his skin was black and I'd never seen a black man be celebrated like that. And I have tried many, many, many times to explain what a moment like that means to a little girl, a kid watching from the cheap seats as my mom came through the door bone tired from cleaning other people's houses. Let failure be your friend. There are going to be times, of course, where you're gonna win a lot. A lot of things are gonna go your way. And it's wonderful to bask in that adulation and to feel proud of your successes. But there are also going to be times, the satisfaction that those moments bring, nothing can compare to that. Those victories will feed you for years to come and help you stay committed when your tank is sometimes empty. Winning is great, it's fantastic. I love it, I love being number one, I love winning. But it's the times when things go wrong, when you fall or fail, that you're actually going to learn the most about yourself. You know, all those years on the Oprah show, 25 years, we were the number one show for 25 years, and that's because I lived with the intention to serve the audience. The audience came first every show. I would sit with the producers and say, well, I can't do that because I can't find the truth of myself in that show. I have to have a thread of truth to be able to hold on to. So I knew so well the audience. I felt like I was the audience. The audience um, was me. And I felt so connected. And then I ended that and started a new network. And I flailed for a while. And I was really upset with myself. But I will tell you that when I was able to shift the paradigm to start looking at, wow, what I have instead of what I don't have, what I have instead of what I thought I'd lost, I was able to begin to turn things around. But it's those moments of being of uncertainty. It's the moments where, you know, all of my mistakes show up on the evening news. You can make a mistake. I can tell if I've done something wrong as I'm seeing involved with everybody. But learning from the moments where things weren't going so great, being in moments where things weren't going so great, being able to get still, to connect with that which I know is God, the force, the power greater than myself, and to come back and realize that in order to move forward, you move forward by taking the next right step. You don't have to know everything to do. You don't have to know all the steps to make. Just what is the next right move? And then there's this. It's a big, hard world out there, but you're ready for it. And you're ready because there is nothing more powerful than you using your personality to serve the calling of your soul. Every one of us has been called to the planet to use, and in this moment, in this political moment where everybody is just hysterical, in this moment, the call is for whatever side you choose to be on, to use more of you to bring forth the light. And to do that, you've got to have clarity about who you really are. What I know for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. And I'm especially proud and inspired by all the women who have felt strong enough and empowered enough to speak up and share their personal stories. Each of us in this room are celebrated because of the stories that we tell. 